The next question asks, what is the percent ionization of a solution of butanoic acid? Uh, it's a two-part question. The first half it asks, what's the percent ionization of a 0.0075 molar solution of butanoic acid? And then the second half of the question asks, what's the percent ionization of the same acid, but now an additional 0 0.085 molar concentration of butanoate is added to the solution. So the conjugate base of butanoic acid is added in a certain concentration, and we want to calculate what the percent ionization is under those conditions. In the first half of the problem, part A, which is number 17, uh, dash 15 in brown, we construct an ice table. HB symbolizes butanoic acid in the undissociated state. This is the butanoic anion, which I symbolize as B minus. Incidentally, butanoic acid looks like this in bond line notation. One, two, three, four. These are carbons. CH3, CH2, CH2, C double bond O, and there's the ionizable proton. At any rate, we have an initial concentration of 0 0.0075. An amount X dissociates, giving you an equilibrium concentration of 0 0.0075 minus X. X of the conjugate base appears, as well as X of the concentration of the hydronium cation or the proton if you like. I did that approximation. I assumed that x is going to be a lot less than 0 0.0075 when I set up the equation. So it's products. Here are the two products over reactants equals x squared over 0 0.007 minus 5. Because this value x is a very small number, I did this approximation. And uh, for the first part of the calculation, found out that x is equal to 3.35 times 10 to the minus 4. Now you could stop right there, calculate the pH, and you would find out that it's 4.5% ionization. And the actual answer is about 4.4. So it was not a really significant error if you stop the calculation there. But I did continue, I did a few iterations until the number settled down and stopped changing and by the second decimal place. You see that at the fourth decimal place it's the same. So pretty well, by the fourth iteration, you get exactly the same number as if you use the quadratic formula. Um, so I, I use this number, plug it into the um, equation for percent ionization, which is the conjugate base over the unionized acid times, the, times 100, and we get 4.37. We're only allowed two significant figures, so the value turns out to be 4.4% ionization. In the second half of the question, we add an additional 0 0.085 molar concentration of the conjugate base of the same acid. So we have the uh, butanoic acid and the butanoic anion of sodium butanoate added in the solution. And in this case, I decided to use the henderson hasselbalch equation to calculate the pH. And from the pH, we can establish how much um, proton was released into the solution, from which we assume came from the um, from the unionized acid. So any additional um, protons that, co that come into the solution will have come from the ionization of that acid. And also, of course, the uh, conjugate base, any additional conjugate base that comes from the uh, Hg has to have been ionized from the original acid. We can't do the, the uh, we can't do a percent ionization calculation where you put this as the numerator and that as the denominator because you would get a percent ionization greater than 100%. That would be an error that you might be tempted to fall into. You have to assume that any additional base that is formed, any additional conjugate base that forms over and above this 0.085 is coming from the HP. So we did that. We used the henderson hasselbalch equation. We plugged in the concentrations that they give us in the problem, and we get that the pH is equal to 5.88, from which we find out that the proton concentration is um, 1.3 times 10 to the minus 6. We then assume that we do the percent ionization, uh, uh, percent ionization calculation. We find out that it's only 0.018% ionized. The next question poses a little bit of a problem. We're asked to make a buffer that is at a, starting at a pH of 3.5 
and we're given a choice of three weak acids, formic acid, acetic acid, and phosphoric acid. We know the Ka values because they're listed in the back of the book. So what I did is I calculated the pKa values for all three of those acids. And I found out that formic acid had a pKa value which was the closest to 3.5. Why do we want a pKa value that's close to 3.5? Because whenever the, pK, the pH equals the pKa, the acid is half ionized. And in, a, in an ideal buffer, it can buffer changes of pH in both directions, whether you add acid or base. So I write that we're looking to make a buffer with a pKa value close to 3.5 so that there is an even amount of acid and its conjugate base to ensure buffering capacity in both directions. Formic acid is the best pig for the pKa of 3.74. The next step in calculation, we use the henderson hasselbalch equation to first put down what we do know. We know the pH has to be 3.5, the pKa is going to be 3.74 because that's the pKa of formic acid. And we're going to put a value x for this proportion, because it's the only thing we don't know in our problem. And it's what we're trying to establish to make our buffer. I transpose the 3.74 to find out that x has to be negative 0.24. So negative 0.24 is equal to the log of the proportion of the conjugate base to the acid concentration in that solution of buffer. When I do the negative log of 0.24, I get that the proportion, the fraction, is 0.5754. That means that the proportion of conjugate base to acid is 0.57. So a slight excess of the acid is necessary such that the ratio A minus over HA is equal to 0.574 and will produce a buffer with a pH of 3.5. So to find out what that proportion is, I said let X equal the mLs of um, A minus solution, of the conjugate base containing solution. I set up the algebra, solved for X, and found out that it takes 365 mLs of the conjugate base and 635 ml of the acid, totaling one liter, because it asks, it specifies in the solution that we have to make a one liter solution. And just to check, double check the results, I plugged it back into the henderson hasselbalch equation. You'll notice I simply put in the values of uh, mLs. Why? Because they're both multiplied by the same concentration, so that's going to cancel anyway. And it turns out that it gives you a, pH, a buffer of pH 3.5. So in conclusion, to make a buffer that has a pH of 3.5, mix 365 mLs of sodium formate with 635 mLs of formic acid.